Let's go over some more integrals. We're going to do trigonometric, reciprocal, exponential. We're even going to do rational function integrals. So remember what integrals are. They're antiderivatives. They're also the area under the curve. We're going to concentrate on the antiderivative part here. Remember what a rational function is. That's like if we do like a, you know the integral of, let's say, x to the power of n, but where n is an element of, uh, for example, rational numbers. So it's like this uh, q, for example, looks like that. This here are rational numbers, which means it can be written as a fraction. Those are the things we're going to concentrate on. So for example, um, integral of square root of x dx. This looks kind of hard to do, but we don't have anything new to learn. We just used this trick with integrals from before. Do you remember what it was? We said that the integral of f of x, oops, sorry, of uh, let's say x to the n dx, remember what it is? It's just equal to x to the power of n plus 1. You have to raise it uh, and then divide it by that same number. And don't forget to add the plus c. That's what we do here. So let's see what we do here. First, I think it's a good idea to rewrite the integral. So let's just rewrite it to be more calculus friendly. Because this is kind of gross, but if you remember, we can rewrite the square root of x as x to the power of 1 half. That's actually a lot easier to do the integral with, because now we can use this rule here. So though it's going to get a little bit ugly, the idea is fairly straightforward. So let's just keep going then. So now let's do the integral. So we'll actually evaluate it now, so we don't need this crowbar anymore. I like that uh, expression for it. So if we do this right here, how does it go? Well, it goes x to the power of well, 1 half plus 1, all that over 1 half plus 1. Isn't that the rule? You have to add 1 to it. Don't forget, plus c. All right. Well, what is 1 half plus 1? We have to figure that out. Well, that's just saying, uh, let's see here, it's x to the well, 1 half plus, and I forget to get this a common denominator, so it would be 2 halves. Wouldn't that be the same? Over, you know, 1 half plus 2 halves. I guess I could have saved myself a time by figuring it out once, but oh well. Here we go. So that means, oh, whoops, don't forget, plus c. There we go. So let's see, that equals 3 halves, isn't it? So x to the power of 3 halves, all that divided by 3 halves plus c. What happens when I divide by a fraction? I can multiply by the reciprocal, so I'll put the 2 on top, the 3 on the bottom, and I have x to the power of 3 halves plus c. And actually, this could be the answer. I could be done. Some people like to think of this and you know keep going a little bit further. We can. We could keep going and say, well, let's see here. We could write this as x to the power of, uh, well, we could say x to the power of um, 3. And all that's to the power of 1 half. That's the same thing, because this is the same thing as saying 3 times 1 half. Um, and the reason why you could do that, I guess, if you wanted to, you could actually write it. Let's see here. You could say it's um, x cubed, but then it's the square root of it. I mean, you could do it like that. There's a couple other ways you could write it. I mean, they're all fine. I don't know. I think this way here is okay. But uh, there we go, something like that. So that's how we can deal with rational functions. Now let's deal with reciprocal functions. So this one right here, actually I'm going to just talk about that later. This one right here, let's just uh, look at the formula booklet. Remember for derivatives, we had f of x, which if it was natural log of x, it became 1 over x if it was the derivative. Just like the derivative of sine is cos, derivative of cos is negative sine, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Well, remember that an, an, uh, an integral is an antiderivative. So instead of going from f to f primed, we're going from f primed to f. So in other words, we're going this way now. So hopefully you'll see, I mean, they, they gave you these in your formula booklet, but they didn't have to. I thought it was actually pretty interesting, right? So for the reciprocal functions, we can say, hey, the integral of 1 over x dx, let's do that one. We'll figure it out right now. So the integral of 1 over x dx it's going to be, let's see, it's going to be natural log. Now we'll put absolute value, though, because we've got to keep it positive. Don't forget, plus c. There we go. We're done. Isn't that kind of cool? So that is this first one right here. Mm, that's where I can actually give you this really bad joke right here. So look at this one. So ha, 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 watch. Because if you do the integral of 1 over cabin, then it becomes a log cabin. Oh, God. 
I mean, this is actually a really poor joke, but actually to understand it, you really have to know about integrals because keep in mind what a natural log of x is. Natural log of x is the same thing as saying log base e of x. So technically, this is log. Get it? It's a log cabin, as in like a you know a little cabin in the woods, maybe made of you know logs. But actually, this isn't the end of the joke. So the integral of one over cabin is not just log cabin because we're forgetting something. So I want to add this part. Now you're going to hate me, I think, um, but I don't care. I'm going to tell you the rest of it. So there's an extra part of the joke. I wish I made this up, but I didn't. One of my professors at university told me this. He said, no, 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 no. It's not log cabin. It's houseboat. This is so dumb. Do you know why it's houseboat? Because you forgot the C. Get it? In other words, it's supposed to be log cabin plus the letter C, but instead of doing that, you should add the C, get it, as in like the water. So if you have a log cabin in the water, it's a house. Oh, God. <laughs> but to understand this joke, do you realize how clever you have to be? You have to understand the integral of 1 over x is natural log. You have to know that natural log is a log. And you have to know that we add the plus C all the time. But instead, we're adding like the C as in the water. Oh, God. But anyway, I love that joke. I think it's actually really fun. So this is, you know, you're in the C, get it? So there we go. <laughs> you can uh, impress your teacher. So trig functions, hopefully these will be really easy. And they are, look, integral of cos is sine. So watch, I'll write it out. So integral of cosine x dx is just going to be sine x, but don't forget, plus c. So that's a pretty easy one. And the integral of sine x dx, now you gotta watch out here, because sine, because we had a minus here, this will just become minus cos x plus c. So those are the two trigonometric ones. So in case we need some things with trig, we get those ones. And thankfully, they gave you that on your formula booklet, so that was kind of nice. And even better, if you start with e to the x, you end up with e to the x. All right, so let's write that one down. So the integral of e to the x dx is just e to the x plus c. But maybe that helps you to remember, that dumb joke helps you to remember to always add the plus c, because you forgot the c. So there we go. So that's how we deal with these. Let's just do some examples maybe just to see if we can figure this out. So now we've got this integral of 4 over x minus 2 sine x dx. Let's do it. So to do this, well, we'll just uh, figure this out here. So this will be, let's see now. There's a 4 sitting here, but that's all right. It's like a 4 times 1 over x. So it'll be, let's see, what's the integral of 1 over x again? Natural log. But of course, we had a 4 in front, so we'll just put a 4 in front of this. So 4 times a natural log of x. Now, we have minus 2. And now what's the integral of sine? Integral of sine is minus cos. So I'll put a minus cos here. Don't forget plus c. Well, what do we do about the minus 2 times minus cos? We just got to fix that one, don't we? So it's just 4 ln of x. And we'll say it's plus because I'm minus 2 times minus 1. So it's going to be plus 2 cos x plus c. That's it. We got this one, right? So that hopefully was uh, fairly easy for you. Once you learn these tricks, you'll see it's not so bad at all. Although they look really terrible. The key is to not panic and just use your tables. I like this one right here with the Spider-Man. <laughs> e to the x, integral of e to the x, derivative of e to the x. They're all the same. Yes. So here we start off with f primed, and we want f. How do we do that? Well, that's another way of saying do the integral, because remember, Doing an integral is anti-differentiation. If you start off with f prime, you end up with f. So although this sounds complicated, it's the same thing. We'll just write it out. You always have to write out your integral. So f of x is equal to the integral of f prime of x dx, which will be the integral, remember it's indefinite because I don't know the bounds, of 4x cubed. It's always a good idea to just write out what you're going to do. So 4x cubed plus 10x minus 3e to the x. Okay, so then, oh, don't forget dx. Maybe I'll put it all in brackets like this. Let's go ahead and do the integral now. Let's go ahead and evaluate it. So what does 4x cubed become? You remember your trick here? It becomes, this becomes one more, so 3 plus 1 is 4, so it's 4 over 4. I gotta divide by the same number. 
plus 10. Now right now it's an x to the 1, so it becomes x to the 2 over 2. This one right here, minus 3, integral of e to the x is just e to the x. Don't forget, plus c. Well, we'll just do a little bit of simplifying here. The 4s cancel out, that's nice. The 10 over 2 cancels out to give me a 5. So I have f of x equals, let's see, it's going to be x to the 4th. Uh, I'll make a nicer 4, maybe. x to the 4th plus 5x squared minus 3e to the x, all that plus c. And I should be done. And remember, if you ever want to check if you did it right, what should you do? Do the derivative. Let's just try just for fun here to check. Let's check. So start with f of x. Let's find f prime of x of this one. Let's do this derivative. This derivative, remember how to do derivative of a polynomial. The number comes in front. So it's going to be 4 times x, and then it becomes 1 less. Plus, let's see, 2 times 5 is 10. x to the power of 1, so that's fine. Minus 3 e to the x. And this plus c, it disappears. Boom. Is this really what I started off with? Yes. I've done it right. See that? Ta-da! We're done. You see, it wasn't so bad at all, actually. So maybe this stuff isn't quite so stressful for you, I guess. The, the whole goal is to try to show you that you can actually do these kinds of questions, okay? You can solve them. You can get through the answers. You just have to be very, very careful. And uh, just take your time. And there you go.